to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm your boy, Brother Vince, and I'm an Army veteran. And today I want to talk to you about how the VA can account for $187 million in emergency COVID-19 funded. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you can find more content here on YouTube. Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Reddit for more content. If you're a veteran who'd love to share your story and resource for veterans and non-veterans who would love to share your resources for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. Now that we got all that good business stuff out the way, man, we're about to get into this article talking about the VA losing $187 million. That is absurd. That is crazy. Because the thing I'm trying to figure out, how do you lose that much money? Somebody has to do some explaining, especially during the time where now they're talking about potentially cutting VA benefits and saying that, you know, veterans should be reduced and all of these other things, man. We need to know what's going on with this money because there's nowhere in the world you mean to tell me $187 million has gone missing. So I'm going to read a little of the article. I'm going to read the article to you who may need me to read it so that you can understand what's going on. So it says the Department of Veteran Affairs can account for at least $187 million in supplementary COVID-19 funding spreading across more than 10,000 transactions related to the pandemic, according to the House Oversight Committee. C- committee. Congress and the VA are at odds over the department's handling of ne- nearly $37 billion in additional funding it received to address the COVID-19 pandemic. The House Veteran Affairs Committee leader on both sides of this of the aisles um critical of its failure to account for every dime. So the quick, quick the biggest question I'm trying to figure out is how do you lose all this money? And if they lost thirty-seven billion dollars, and I'm hearing they want to roughly cut like sixty or whatever billion dollar for veteran funding, is this the reason why they're trying to cut some of our funding? Because they misplaced some money, and in order for them to get that money back, they have to take away from us in order to pay back. I don't know. I'm just drawing some lines in the sand, trying to figure out what's going on. But what I do know is this is crazy because there's no way in the world you mean to tell me that the VA is having problem with money, especially if they lost up at least $187 million that can't be accounted for. And now Congress is thinking that, you know, they're, you know, mishandling $37 billion in additional fund that they received to address the COVID-19 pandemic. So the quick, the biggest question I have right now is, okay, what did they do with the money for during the COVID-19 pandemic? Like what, what, who they paid out that money to? Was it to the employees? Was it to veterans? Like, where did the money go? Who got this money? Because I'm a veteran. I haven't received any money. Or have any of y'all out there received some money? I mean, I know that there, there may have been a lot of veterans who were out there applying for compensation and pension that may have received some of this funding, but this said additional funding. So what additional funding did they put out? You know, I've seen they were doing a lot of renovation and upgrades and different things like that. But I thought that was kind of pointless because they really didn't allow us to even come up to the VA. So what were you building and increasing this, you know, the size of the VA for um, here in Texas or on Fort Worth to be exact? That's crazy. Somebody got to tell us something. And it said Chairman Mike Bose, R the third. Um, Republican the third, I guess that's the um, reason he's in, and rank member Representative Mark um, Takano, um, Democrat of California, praised the department for his pandemic response overall, but called the VA out for its inability to account for the money during the hearing. Now, that is crazy. That is crazy. And all of this stuff is going on during the time where, you know, they're having these hearings and the department's message on the debt ceiling, you know, like, man, I mean, we're hearing all this stuff, but it's like, okay, where's the money? So what they're saying is we need to make sure that the money is being spent wisely. You could say it's a paperwork error. You could say whatever, but that's why we have oversight, both said. No offense to sailors, but the last three years during the pandemic, we spent money like a drunken sailor. And the oversight has not occurred, and it is going to occur. So 
they're saying between 2020 and 2021, the VA received roughly 37 billion to address COVID-19 response, including an initial 60 million, followed by 19.6 billion in coronavirus aid relief and economic security act, and another 17 billion in the American Rescue Plan. As part of the deal to receive the funding, the department was required to account for its spending. A mandatory underscore by passage in November 2021 of the VA Transparency and Trust Act. So, if the VA got all this money, and I really, I really, really gonna stop right there because I don't really want to go into more um, details as far as this article. I am gonna post this article in the description. I have some concerns as a veteran because. Here it is that threatening to take away our funding that we have now. And from what I'm reading this article, I could be wrong. I could be misinterpreting what they're saying. But this is part of the reason why they're trying to take away funding. Because they gave the VA all of this money. And now they're having issues with finding this money. So my question is. Where is the money? Who has the money? What did they do with the money? Because if y'all are threatening us, the veterans, and wanting to take away our benefits, then I need to know where the money is. Because if this has something to do with the reason why they want to take from us, then that's not our fault. And we shouldn't be held accountable because of somebody else's actions. You know what I'm saying? I understand that, you know, in the military, when we had our battle buddies or, you know, um, I guess um, sailor mates or whatever they say in other branches. I was Army, so I don't really know what y'all call each other in other branches. But I know in Army, we call each other battle buddies. So if my battle buddy got in trouble, I got in trouble. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? Rightfully so, because that was during the military. But when you're talking about the VA being given roughly $37 billion to address COVID-19 response. And out of that money, they're missing some money. Roughly $187 million in a major um, emergency um, COVID-19 funding can't be found. That's a big problem. That ain't no chump change, man. If you say $5, all right, I can take that out of my pocket and give it to you. But $187 million? And then they still questioning the other couple of billions, 37 to be exact, as to what did they do with the money? That's a big, huge problem. And something need to be said about that. Because, again, why are veterans being held accountable for other people's actions? Don't take away from us because you made a mistake. If somebody did something with that money, if people within the system was taking the money, saying they were giving it to veterans, then things like that need to be investigated and addressed. And one of the things I'm seeing right now with the VA is they got a lot of issues going on. And I'm praying that a lot of these things would be fixed because they, on one side, they're um, trying to, you know, get all these cases in for the PAC Act. On the other side, they're trying to take away money. On the other side, they're missing money. Well, something got to be done. Somebody need to be relieved from of duty. Some people need to be moved around. Some more veterans need to be hired. Me being one of them, because I've been, you know, at one point fighting, trying to get within the VA system. And for some reason, I don't know why it's so hard to get in the VA, especially, uh, especially if they have a lot of issues with employees and they don't have enough staff members, then, hey, hire us veterans. Put us on the road. We know how to serve our own. We know how to take care of our own. You know what I'm saying? That's what a lot of us want to do. Like, to be honest with you, that's what I would love to do. I would love to work for the VA so that I can help my brothers and sisters get what's due to them. I want to be a voice, but from what I'm hearing, you know, there's a lot of politics involved, so that may not be a thing that I'm able to do, but hey, I don't know. Maybe God can open up that door, and maybe he can open up that door for many of y'all out there. But what I wanted to do was show y'all this article um, to kind of give y'all an understanding of what's going on out there in the um, in the world for veterans, because it's just a lot going on right now. But what I will say is, don't ever lose hope, don't lose faith, man. Wherever your faith at, take it out that and put it in the Lord. 
Um, put your trust in him. Don't, don't know. The Bible says in Proverbs three and five, if I'm starting it out correctly, it said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he should direct your path. Don't, don't put your trust in this system, man. You know, cause I, when I read a lot of this stuff, yeah, it's heartbreaking news. Um, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, I know it's a test of my faith and I have to have faith in the Lord. I can't have faith in the world system. I can't have faith in man and trust in man. I, I can't do that because that's not where I'm supposed to put it. So I don't know what you believe in. I don't know who you believe in, but I know my trust is in the Lord. So no matter what these people may be doing and no matter what they may be saying, I know everything is going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So don't lose focus. Keep fighting for your benefits. Keep fighting for your health. Keep fighting for your marriage. Keep fighting for your children. Keep fighting, man. Don't give up. Don't give up, man. You know, part of the uh, worry ethos says, I would never quit. I would never accept defeat. I would never leave a fallen comrade. That, that's what I'm doing at, as Vet Talk. <laughs> I'm not quitting. I'm not accepting defeat. And I'm definitely not going to leave a fallen comrade. That's why I started Vet Talk, to help you out so that you can keep fighting. Because you can't give up. You came too far to quit. You came too far to give up and throw in the towel. Out to all those veterans who out there committing suicide, don't do it. You got a lot more to live for. Why I quit? You kill yourself, you quit. And I'm going to be honest to you, it's hard for me to accept quitters in life. It's hard for me to support quitters because I don't know quit. Quit ain't a part of my DNA. But fight is. I'm a fight. You be a fighter. Let's all fight. Let's all keep pushing because there is hope. This has been another episode of Vet Talk with your boy, Brother Vince. As always, Vet Talk out.